Hello, I'm Shane Stevenson, and hello to you, friends of the Buffalo Naval Park. Uh, for this video, for our 28 and 28 series, uh, I'm going to be showing you uh, at least the general areas of admiral spaces, or flag spaces. Okay, there's, um, you know, a lot of the things are just off the tour route. They're on the tour route, but they might not be open, uh, so I'll just be pointing out uh, doors and things like that. And this would all be related to the Admiral and when the Admiral was on board. All right, when I first started here, I said, okay, the O2 level is the Admiral's level. But it really isn't. All right, the Admiral bled up to the O3 level, which I didn't find out uh, for maybe a year or so after I was here. Again, I, I just said, okay, Admiral's, the Admiral's uh, level is the O2 level. Uh, currently my office, just like an archivist, it's a mess, as it always is. There's collections and things like that on the ground, as you can see. So these are things I need to process. But um, this was an admiral space, because this office was the admiral's chief of staff office. Okay, so he had his own birthing and his own head. All right, so when I stay on board, it's pretty cool. That's where I stay. So I can do work and go right to bed, or vice versa, wake up and just go right to work. Uh, so that would be the first space I'm gonna sh I showed you. Uh, so we'll head up to the O2 level, and we'll take a walk around. Follow me. All right, so as you can see here, these are more of the collections I need to process. So these are things that I've just found just in various spaces, things that have been mailed to me. Um, you know, and then I gotta organize it and find its proper spot. So anyway, this is the Admiral's Quarters. Sometimes in our cruise books, there are pictures of the Admiral's Quarters, and um, in this corner, there was a couple chairs and like a coffee table, so this could be like a informal meeting area. He certainly would have had a similar uh, conference table. All right, we have his galley back here through this pass-through. All right, so that's where his galley would have been, um, and the pass-through for the food, or hors d'oeuvres, and certainly the scullery or pots and pans uh, to clean uh, the dishes. Behind this door here was his birthing and head. It's chilly in here. All right, so this is his birthing and head. And there it is. I know in last night's video, uh, the 20 hundred watch, we talked about Secretary Mabus. He was the SecNav. And so if you watched our live, um, or if you uh, reviewed it after we went live, you'll hear us talk about uh, Secretary of Navy Ray Mabus's uh, flag. And so, so when the Admiral was on board, he could bring anywhere from 50 to 100 staff with him. Certainly the Marine Detachment that would come along with him for security, and just all of the uh, administrative uh, positions that would come along with the Admiral. So now we can head up to the O2 level. Okay, the first area I'd like to point out is the flag plot. 
Okay, so as admiral, he would control the fleet from this space. All right, so there was a the flag plot message area. All right, you'll see stamp up there. And he also had secure communications on starboard. This is the enclosed bridge. Again, with all of the communications needed to control the fleet, here is the Admiral's chair. Oh boy, it's windy out, folks. And so the antennas on board the USS Little Rock would allow for communication with the rest of the fleet and they would even be able to tap into, so to speak, they would be able to tap into uh, the actual information from the various ships through the antennas that they had on board. The NTDS, which is the Christmas tree on the bow, was able to gather data from all of the vessels and so they could see, they would be the eyes and the ears, and see what those ships are seeing. So here you'll see a map of the Mediterranean Sea. All right, and their home port right here, Gaeta, Italy. All right, I don't think this was original to uh, the ship. I think at some point they brought this map on board. But again, the nerve center for the Admiral to control the fleet, and he would have had, you know, many of his staff working here, working in the communications. This heavy door right here, with the combination lock, was the nuclear strike room. That was the flag's space, or the Admiral's space. But it's now used by a group called Ronnie, which is the Radio Association of Western New York. Again, this was given to them a long time ago. I probably would not have given them this space, because this could be an important space to show on a tour as the nuclear strike room. But there it is. And again, on the O2 level still, we have the flag plot message room. All right, so two entranceways. One from the flag, the plot room itself, or the war room, and one from here. We have the flag sea cabin. All right, so when the ship was at sea, this was uh, where the admiral lived and birthed. All right, this was the flag operations an officer's office. It's now, sorry everyone, the lights are off. Right, it's now just a, uh, uh, an exhibit for the Persian Gulf War. All right, again, a flag space here. It's been converted. This area was the flag legal office and the uh, Public Affairs Office. And I converted it into a flag exhibit. I put most of the flags now, you'll see these three. We have a North Korean flag. We have a shamrock flag that flew on the Sullivans. Um, I believe in the 1950s. All right, and we have a flag from the William C. Miller DE-259. All 
And again, staying on the O2 level. This was another compartment. I'm not seeing uh, the stamp or anything. But this would have been a flag space. This was just a general flag office. And these were state rooms, so this is a state room here. All right, now let's head up to the O3 level. And here I will turn on the lights. Okay, this was the, oh, this is a big project that I'd love to work on. Uh, get this plexiglass off, but certainly cleaned up. Um, this was the flag weather office. All right, so this is where they were, the admiral staff was able to, oh boy, it's a little, it's a little wet in here. Oh boy. We're going to have to analyze this, what the deal is. Looks as though that a couple of these pipes might be leaking. I can hear it coming right down. Oh, man. All right, we got to get in here and shore this up. All right, so this is where all the weather reports were gathered uh, and collated. State room here. What a wreck. And then heading forward on the O3 level, we had again a lot of spaces for the Admiral. All right, we had the Flag Intelligence Office, which is now converted into uh, the 82nd Airborne compartment. We had a flag map room right here. Again, intelligence office. And the cool thing about that is, maybe you've seen that before in other videos, since it was a space that needed to be sanitized, there's a buzzer, red light, white light, can come in and enter or not. And the buzzer would have been right here. Let me hit the lights here. We also had the flag logistics office. Let me see here. Flag plans office. Flag plans office. Now this space here is still in its original condition. So it does have the desks, it has uh, the safes that are secured, and it really hasn't been converted. Then we also have this space up here. So as I said, on the O3 level, my word, we've got the flag intelligence office, we've got um, the flag plans office, all right, here was the captain's at-sea cabin. The map room. So again, intelligence gathering, uh, collating of the, all that data. And now somewhere on board, I've been told... are the silhouettes of Russian ships. So, you know, there's always those little lead models of, you know, the Japanese fleet um, during World War II. Well, I guess they had those on board for Russian vessels, destroyers, cruisers, things like that. And I've been told that somewhere there are those models no one seems to remember where they are, but 
I want to make it my mission to find one or two if I can. So we had the Admiral's quarters, we have the O2 level, legal, public affairs, up on the O3 we have the uh, map room, the weather room, the intelligence uh, offices, and again all geared towards giving the Admiral the information that he needs to do his job successfully. Well this was a quick little general look at the Admiral's working spaces and living spaces on board USS Little Rock. Obviously there are other flagships they are not around anymore but it would have been so very cool to see if what the differences are between say the USS Albany or the USS Springfield uh, other flagships uh, of the 6th or 2nd or 7th fleet and how that layout and how that ship architecture would have been different on those vessels. Boy, there's a lot of buzzing going on here, everybody. <laughs> I hope it's just the wind. Anyway, uh, thanks for watching as always. Uh, we appreciate all of your support. Uh, and again, please check us out on our live sessions. We're going to be coming live March 2nd and March 16th. Um, and we'll see you soon, like tomorrow. <laughs>